Cheers, oh, boys. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Friday. You made it through the end of the week. Congratulations. This is Fun Day Friday. Tastes good? So good, buddy. Yeah, it's a little nipply out here today, boys. It makes the beer taste better. We, are, right. we earned it this week. Yeah, that's right. A lot right. of work going on. Hey, it's a windy, cold one for you today. The boys are going to be doing seafood. We've got some great tips for you. We'll see you in just a minute. It's Fun Day Friday, baby. Let's go. Hey, shout out to Facebook, shout out to YouTube. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. That's right. Hey, those of you on Facebook, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you head on over there and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm showing it a little bit of love. Shout out to all of our friends on YouTube. Yeah. Hey, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. Let us know where you're watching from. Mm -hmm. And let, it, let us know which one of us is your favorite. How about that? Start it out, right? <laughs> I'm going to come in last here. I, I <laughs> hope y'all won't get disappointed. That's all no, I'm no, That's right. It's going to be all John. It's going to be all John. Give, give all the love to Taylor. That's right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we've got some, it's cold, it's windy, yeah. it's seafood season. We've got some great seafood for you uh, at rectech.com, R-E-C-T-E-Q.com. We've got some amazing recipes. But today, what are you going to be doing, Greg? Uh, I'm going to show you how to make an amazing blue crab stuffed lobster Yum. right here. Mm. Yeah, good times. I love blue crab and I love lobster. Those yeah. are two things. That, yeah, for sure. Yes, delicious. Two things that are going to be delicious together and, so nice. and even better with butter. Yes, 100% right. better with butter. That's right. Right. And what I'm about you, John? Pole snapper, Jody. And this recipe is yep. on the website so you guys could totally go check it out. But I'm going to be showing you guys how to take some whole snapper and cook it on your grill. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, us sweet. southerners kind of struggle in the cold, but what doesn't struggle is the Rectex behind us maintaining temp. Perfect. That's right. Yeah, it's a good time. Smells right. good already. We'll be spinning the wheel of Rec Tech and giving something away. Speaking of Nick, can you go grab that? And we've got a winner to announce, okay? So make sure you guys stay tuned. Um, uh, but we're going to go right into it. Yeah. Who's going first? I'm going to go first. Go for it, Hunts. All right. So, guys, like I and said. And gals. We, and gals. I'm everyone out there. I always there, say that. We are going to be showing you all how to do some amazing seafood. And I'm going to be starting off with Snapper. Now, it's one of my... Uh, Go-to fish, yep. Jody. When I'm looking for fish, I love grouper. I love snapper. Uh, super delicious, flavorful. Um, Don't get blown a away. Yeah, get a little flaky. It gets real flaky, and it really uh, adheres to whatever kind of seasoning you're putting on. I love the crispy snapper skin myself. It's, it's like a, it's like a fish chip. It's excellent. Delicious. Brother. So what we got here is some whole snapper, right? And this is how you're going to be able to get it at your fishmonger or at your local grocery store. That's how it's going to come. Usually, it's going to come viscerated which means that they've cut open and taken all the guts out of there. Yum. And it's going to come guts. scaled, right? But it still has all of these <laughs> fins on here. So what we're going to do okay. is I'm going to show you all how to properly handle these fish. But like Jenny said, that. put any questions in the comment section. Yep. We'd love to hear them. Yep, and we're going to need you guys to smash that share button. That's a requirement for winning something on this show. So we're going to give you three seconds to do it. We're going to count you down. Three, two, one. Smash, smash it. it. And for the older folks. Smash it means hit your share button <laughs> and share this on the internet. That's right. All right. All right, so I'm going to be using Great our questions handy, already coming in, everybody. Dandy poultry shears. They work great for this, too. So they left a little bit of stuff in here, so I'm just going to come in and clean it out real quick. I got okay. my nitrile gloves on. Super easy. But this thing is pretty well clean on the inside, right? Yum. Looking good. Why do you want to clean that stuff out, Chef John? Well, it's just anything that you guys don't want to eat. I highly suggest you clean it out, right? Okay. And it's super easy. Just get your hand in there and tear out anything that's going to come out. And you can right? use uh -huh. like fish pliers or a fresh pair of needle nose. You could. You know, not one's been rusting <laughs> in the toolbox for years. That's true. You could. But the next thing you have to deal with is all of these fins on here. Now, some of these on the snapper are going to be super sharp. Yum. All these on the top right here. I'll eat those. Super, super, super sharp. So we're going to go ahead and take those off. So. Using my shears, I just snip it, right? Okay. Super easy. And then we're just gonna come across the back here. Love it. Yeah, the worst is getting poked with those dorsal fins, man. Yeah, those man. things just like. It will, it hurts. Oh, it's and it's gonna leave a hole. Minnesota, California, Georgia, Savannah, Evans in the house, Florida, uh, vote one for Chef John. That's right. Illinois, Benson, yeah, yeah. North Carolina, Phoenix. Mike said snapper, yum. First, but not the last vote. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we're taking all of them off. Even these side ones, there is a sharp barb on these first two. They're coming off, right? We're just gonna leave the tail on here because that's really the part I like, Jody, that snapper tail. 
Mm. Now, if we're frying this up, I'm leaving all of that stuff on there and I'm yes. nibbling on it after yes. I get done with that bad boy. hundred percent, a hundred percent. But for this application, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. Now we're gonna check it for scales. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chef's knife and go in from the tail to the head. I'm just gonna scrape upwards, okay. right? Just to see if I feel anything coming off though, but our fishmonger did a really good job of making sure that all the scales are off of this okay. thing. So at this point, it's prepped and ready to go. Guys, so what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna make some slices in here. Now all this, I'm not going really deep. It's gonna help it cook a little more evenly and it's gonna allow some of these seasonings to get down onto that muscle. I so like you can it. fillet it at this point before slicing you it? You totally right? could. And if I was gonna fillet it, I was just gonna take it underneath the dorsal fin. I would've left that fin on okay. and use it as a guide and I just would've come back on the fillet. Super simple, guys, Love to that. fillet. But cooking a fish whole, man, is just so much more flavor yep. and moisture, and the presentation is just like second to none. It so is. that leads us to our next question, Chef Greg. Good point. Um, are you a bone-in or a bone-out kind of man when it comes to seafood? Oh, man, I'm, I'm a huge bone-in kind of guy when it comes to, to fish. Okay. Now, some people might not want to see, like, dinner looking back at you, so then at that point, I would probably remove uh, <laughs> the head after the fact. But cooking it whole like that, the flavor, it's just like cooking a whole chicken, right? A lot more flavor, a lot more moisture um, versus, say, like a boneless, skinless breast. Yeah. Um, but for me, that's that's like a home run, man. That's Sign me up for a couple good. of those. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and season the inside cavity. What are you seasoning with? I'm using, today, I'm using that Colden's Freaking Greek. Okay. But guys, you're only limited by your imagination when it comes to our seasonings. Uh, Asian Persuasion would be proper in here. Chef Greg's Four Letter Rub. Even Ray's Loco Gringo would be good in there. Don't forget that yeah. Soul Powder. Soul also. Powder would be good, too. So we're gonna take, this is time. I'm sorry I didn't say that. This is some time in Trying here, to rush through, time. big guy, slow so down. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stuff it in that cavity. Mm. And then I'm just gonna take some lemons that I've sliced kind of thin, and we're gonna stuff these in here too. What else could you stuff in there, Chef John? Whatever aromatics you would like, Jody. You could uh, put- um, Oranges? Oranges in there, limes in there. Sage. Sage rosemary. in there, rosemary, yeah. Cilantro? Cilantro, you could put that in there. Or coriander. Yeah, coriander, coriander would be proper. All right, so now that we have this bad boy stuffed, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with a little bit of olive oil on the outside. Now, this olive oil is gonna act like a binder, just like if you're doing your, your pork, Okay, right? okay. So we're just gonna season this up, a little bit of oil. Greg Powers says he prefers fish whole. Oh, I like it, Greg Powers. He knows all about that. But, you know, he's from down and nah. Right. That's how they do it He puts some Vegemite on that <laughs> So back over the top with some Colden's Freaking Greek. Yum. Kentucky, Georgia. That looks great. Missouri. The sad thing is, Clemson. you're only prepping one of these, not all three. Like yeah. one for everybody. Yeah, know? yeah. Gilbert, okay. South We're going to go straight onto the grill, 350 degrees. Okay. Come on in here, Taylor. Now, I got plenty of room. I'm going to prep up the rest of these just to show you guys how much room I have. But just straight on the grill. These are going to take about 20 minutes to go straight through. It's nice and cold out here, so they didn't really come up to room temperature. So it may take them about 25 minutes. But that's how it is. Super Could you easy. use the uh, stick resistant cooking mat, Chef John? That's a great, yes, you totally can. For okay. any of your seafood, not just for these whole fish or any of your vegetables. If anything you don't want to fall through the grates or stick to the grates, go ahead. Don't and worry, I got you covered because we're going to use one for Look the lobster. That, Chef and Greg. before we go to Chef Greg, uh, one more time, what kind of pellets are you using? Uh, Rectech Ultimate Blend pellets. They're the ultimate blend because they have the perfect blend of red oak, white oak, and hickory. Is that great for seafood? It's perfect for seafood and all foods, guys. It's really my go to pellet. Shoot ya. Awesome. All right, Chef Greg, Chef what, Greg you got? what you got, buddy? All right, we're going to show you an amazing blue crab stuffed lobster. We'll deal with this lobster in a second. We do okay. probably need to name him at some point because it's just going <laughs> to taste better. We've got two pounds. We're actually going to double this recipe. Uh, this is two pounds of lump crab. Uh, it's just canned crab. Now, make sure you go through this with a fine tooth comb because it's not uncommon to have small pieces of shell and cartilage and this and that. That's not good juju. So, appreciate you, Nick, for doing that. Uh, we also earlier sweated off some onion and celery, put a cast iron skillet uh, on the left side, that direct side of that dual fire behind me, and okay. kind of cooked these onions and celery down a little bit. We didn't get a lot of color to them, but we just kind of got the, uh, the rawness out of them. If we wanted to, Chef Greg, could we use the Dutch ovens available on Ooh. the website? Absolutely. And at that point, I would just added everything back in the Dutch oven with the crab, some cream, some sherry, made some delicious she crab soup. There you go. Very cool. um, so we've got our onion celery. There was some garlic in there as well. A little Bijan Dijon mustard. Bijan. A little bit of mayonnaise. Now make sure you taste that crab first, because sometimes the crab itself could be a little on the on the you know wetter side. Sometimes the crab itself is dry. Sometimes it's got some great like a uh, brine sort of like salinity to it. Okay. And sometimes the crab is a little flat. I'm not gonna lie. Ow. It kind of depends on the pack, and that's gonna give you a, a heads up on what you need to do as far as flavor goes. Okay. 
and we're just going to fold this together. We're not going to break it up a lot because, again, you paid for lump crab. That's right. Right? You don't want to break it up completely. Now, my general rule of thumb is one egg per pound of crab. So we've got two oh, okay. eggs like right that. there. One egg per pound. There you go. And then we're going to hit this with that Ray's Loco Gringo. Mm. You could also use your favorite uh, you know, lemon pepper, like the soul powder would be great in there. You could do some heifer dust, some four-letter rubs, some Asian persuasion. Honestly, it just depends on how you want to live your Rectech lifestyle. We want a little bit of color and uh, some, I'll say, spiciness, even though sure. the, the rub here is yeah. not hot. We, we like color It's got some spice. great flavor. Okay. Again, if you've got a favorite seafood rub, you could do that too. Okay. Now, the really important thing is this is a crab cake, not a bread cake. There you go. Okay. So, like rule number one to crab cakes is the crab to bread crumb ratio yep. needs to be like 100% crab to like 1% bread. That's right. <laughs> That's it. So, all we're doing is, and you can see that this mixture is hydrated, but it's not like soup, if that makes sense, right? Yep. Okay. So, we're going to take a little bit of bread crumbs. And we're going to sachet a little bit over the top. Sachet. Yeah, you know. I like it. And then we're just going to kind of fold it in. Normally, I let this rest for about you know two to three minutes. Let those breadcrumbs kind of hydrate. Okay. Okay. And that'll give you the the general rule of thumb. And and again, you know, some this crab was a little bit on the drier side, uh -huh. so I might not use as much breadcrumbs. If it's going to be a little bit of a wetter mixture, maybe I need a little bit more. Mm, right. Yeah. But we're going to let that go just like that. It's not a lot of breadcrumbs, guys. All right. Okay. All right. We got a, a, a question from last week, Chef Greg. Let's go. We were cooking wings. We were. You guys check that out, uh, available on YouTube as well as Facebook. Um, but a lot of folks were asking after the fact, what's the best temperature to get those super crispity, crunchy outside skin wings? Yeah, I tend to cook at at least 400 degrees. At least. Um, and again, you can go a little bit lower if you want, but definitely turn it up. But for me, I don't play any games, right? My New Year's resolution was make it easy. So I run 400 degrees the entire time. Depending on the size of the wings, about 45 to 55 minutes. They're probing well over 185 degrees, yeah. and that skin is really crispy and delicious. And also, don't forget to season the wings, right? That, that seasoning is going to help give you some good crust. That salt's going to render out some of the, that moisture and give you some good crispy That's skinage right. there. Yeah, right. Thank you, Chef Greg. All right, so on to this lobster. This is a fresh, live, uh, I almost said Maryland, Maine lobster, okay? Um, it weighs about a pound and a half, and it is alive. You cannot cook lobsters that are not alive, okay? Now, this happens to be a little lobster anatomy. So this is a female lobster. All right. How do I know that? These little uh, legs right here, see how they kind of cross? That's a, uh, a female lobster. If they were straight, that'd be a male. Now, if she was a breeder, right? There would be a notch in her tail. So if a fisherman catches a lobster and there's got a bunch of eggs underneath, um, they will notch the tail, give her a snack, and send her on her way. That's right. But what we don't want to do is remove these bands because this would really hurt to get pinched. Okay. So there are a couple day, uh, different you know ways say. we can use to dispatch bands this lobster uh, humanely. <laughs> so you can put them in the freezer for about 10 minutes or so, get them good and cold. And then the easiest way is you'll take a sharp knife. Now, I don't use your favorite knife for this, but definitely a sharp one. We're going to put it right at the top of the carapace, okay. right behind the eyes. Man, turn and what your, we're going to do in head, one, everybody, if you don't want to see it. Yep, in one uh, uh, firm, confident motion, we're going to go straight down and forward, and that lobster will be humanely dispatched. Okay, so if you're a little squeamish, uh, yeah, we'll uh, turn your head. Three, so. two, one, slice it. All right, so now this lobster is, uh, is no longer with us, okay? So what we're going to do is, now it might move, it's kind of like a spider and a cockroach, okay? Whoa. But delicious. Yes. <laughs> we're going to cut down that lobster the entire way, and we're going to open it up, okay? Because what we're going to do is, we're going to scoop out all of the uh, the stuff in the carapace. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fill this with that crab filling. Yeah. Okay? That's so we're going to take that, so that stuff out. Now, I don't mind this orange stuff, right? That's kind of, they say it's the row, it's not. Um, but it's gonna turn bright orange and it's very lobstery in flavor. I love it, okay? Now, Chef Greg, what is gonna be the best pellet uh, for, uh, that lends itself best to these uh, seafood dishes? So I'm using cherry today. Um, I like the sweetness of the cherry pellets. Um, and again, it gives a great color to the food. So yep. I'm gonna go with uh, cherry pellets today. But there's really not a right or a wrong, it's just what you like. Maybe you want a little bit more of a punchy smoke. That Texas blend, that mesquite and pecan okay. does a really good job with okay. that. Um, again, no right or wrong answer there. So I'm gonna grab my nonstick mat, available at rectech.com, and we're going to stuff these lobsters and cook them right on there. They only take about 20 minutes. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, 
Now at this point, I can definitely remove these rubber bands. I'm not going to get pinched. Everybody's saying we look cold. Shout out to everybody. Looks you know, so we're, we're, we're not used to this weather down here, right? Like Now, Chef Greg, could you do your recipe on the smokestone? Um, yeah, you could. Just close the lid. Or I'd shape these into crab cakes and make a bunch of crab cakes on the... Uh, there you go. That's the way to go right there, you Chef know. Greg. Chef John, could you do your whole snapper recipe on the smokestone? Yes, you totally could. You totally could. Now, again, you're going to want to close the lid, and it's going to have more of a direct contact with the heating source, so you're going to get a little bit more char on there, but yeah, you totally could. There you go. Very All right, cool. so I'm going to take this lobster and crab, okay? And now the beauty of this is I've got some avenue for seasoning here. We're going to take a little bit more of that loco gringo over go. the top. Available at rectech.com, R-E-C-T-E-Q. Okay, and this is going to take, like I said, right about 20 minutes or so on the, uh, we got the dual fire fired up to 400 degrees. Right now and, that uh, dual fire I, is 10% off at rectech.com. Yeah, right. buddy. Now I did take a cheat. We threw a couple tails on. Oh, because Chef Greg. Guys, give us a, we're going to smash that share button while Chef Greg takes that off. Three, two, one. Smash, smash it. it. Again, these are almost done. You can see we did just tails this time instead of the whole lobster. Split them in half, some of that crab filling over the top. Super delicious, just like that. Yeah. Now, any extra, you can definitely make some crab cakes, and that's probably oh, what we're yeah. going to do right here. For right? Sure. You could stuff shrimp. You could put these in an oyster shell, put them in a clam shell. Delicious. Absolutely. Very cool. Absolutely love it. All right, so give us a, uh, one more time rundown, breakdown of the whole entire recipe, Chef Greg, really quick. Okay, so we took a whole lobster, we cut it in half, we made a crab cake filling. Pretty simple. So it was a pound of crab, one egg, a little mayonnaise, some Dijon mustard, some of the loco gringo, a little breadcrumb, mixed it up, and then we stuffed that inside the lobster. Uh, 400 degrees for about 20, 25 minutes. We're burning the cherry pellets today on that dual fire right behind me. Can't wait, man. Very cool. Good times. Yeah. Very cool. Well, both of these recipes are going to be available at rectech.com. Right. It's now time to announce a winner. Uh, last week, this person did everything that we asked them to. We spun that wheel and it landed on a uh, rub and sauce bundle. So shout out to the winner. I love it. Um, but the winner of last week's rub and sauce bundle is, give me a jump roll, John. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Nichols. Hey. hey. Shout out, Jeff. We really appreciate you. buddy. We want to remind you that you can add a lot of stuff to that order. Totally you can have it shipped right out there to your house for free. That's right. uh, just DM the RecTech Facebook page, and we will confirm that it is you and get that headed out there to you. Congratulations. We'll be spinning the wheel of RecTech in just a little bit after the guy's dishes come off. But keep the questions coming in the comments section down below. Chef John, you got an update for us? Yeah, let's go ahead and come in here and take a look at this. Taylor, you coming in? All right. Like I said, plenty of room for all your sides also as you're doing this. But I went ahead and put this fish on earlier. And you can see it's starting to get white and flaky. I'd say it's probably got a couple more minutes and that thing's gonna be ready to come off. It looks absolutely delicious. Now, once I put this on here, I haven't touched it again. So there's no need to like flip your fish, roll your fish. The grill's gonna take care of all the cooking for you. Yum. So much fun. And again, we've uh, it's cold weather, so the grills aren't having any issues whatsoever, heating no. up, maintaining temperature. No. No. Um, now, uh, guys, what would we do, say, if like if we were feeling frisky, we wanted to change our pellets? What would we, what would we have to do? I'm just going to go ahead and let my grill run empty, you know, and then I'm just going to pour more pellets in there. And if I know I'm going to do that before I start a cook, I'm only going to put enough pellets in there for that cook. I'm Very not going to fill question. the hopper up all the way. Yep. Very I mean, good you can answer. always grab a red solo cup and scoop out what's not there, that. but again, don't overthink it, right? So yeah. just don't feel like you have to completely fill up your hopper each and every time. Yep. Just use what you need, right? Yep. And I uh, want to send a big shout out to all of our Rays Club members. You we go. know you. We know who you are. That's we right. see you out there uh, always displaying all of those cool recipes and all of that cool stuff that you be getting in that box. But we just wanted to send this big special shout out to you. We love you. We thank you. We've got some stuff coming up for you guys. Um, what else? We also wanted to remind everybody. It's a great time after the show ends to update your app, okay? okay? It is very important to make sure that you are running on the proper uh, firmware firmware yeah. for that app to yeah. work properly. Right. So if you're using the app to turn your grill up, down, on or off from anywhere in the world, go ahead and make sure that you're that is either updating automatically or either you just go ahead and update it yourself, Shoot okay? Um, that will solve you some issues and some problems. It's also going to solve us some phone calls up there in the call center. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but if you guys ever need us, feel free to reach out to us at 706-922-0890. Like Jody said, we have a phone bank full of people Ton up there 
Way a ton of folks up there. Call. But the yeah. cool part about it, they own a grill, they cook on a grill. That's Oftentimes right. they'll come down here and make themselves lunch. That's right. And they're pretty generous people, so they cook for everybody, which is kind of interesting. Right. I don't know of any other, you know, U.S. based call center that specializes in the product as well as those ladies and gentlemen upstairs Definitely. like we do here. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, we got some good questions coming in. Is there any issue uh, with fishy odor on the inside of the grill, guys? No. No, no not no. at all. No. Um, no. Like I said, just like anything else, if, if you have food debris post cook, I would definitely recommend keeping your grill on for a, a time to kind of dry that out. Yeah. And just like anything else, clean it, right? So if there's some crusty bits on the grate, go ahead and get that grill brush available in that um, um, grill uh, kit upstairs. Yeah. You know, clean your grates, change your foil, or scrape your pan depending on what you want to do, and uh, you'll be good to go. Yeah, that's what I would say. Scrape your scrape your pan or change your foil after any kind of smelly or greasy cooking. You're gonna be fine. Okay. okay. Um, good question. Still coming in. You guys keep the questions, questions. coming. Uh, what is a what is my fire pot, and how often should I clean it? What is your fire pot? <laughs> That's Shout where, out. That's the heart of it. That's where it all comes hey, together. Hey, we've got some new owners okay, out there, big guys. Well, hey, new owners, that's where everything comes together. The oxygen, the pellets, the heating source, and it holds that fire right in there. Perfect for you. That's what your fire pot is. Ours are indestructible. We've run we've run dump trucks over top of them, yep. put them back in the grill, and they've worked. Yep. And that's one of the things that really sets us apart from our competitors is that fire pit, fire pot. We've never had one fail, corrode, or rust on us. You know, that's and it's placed right there in the center yep. of our that's grills. Right. We don't place them over to the left that's right. or to the right. That's it's right. right there in the center. It's right up underneath your drip tray uh, as well as your deflector shield. I like to take my hand in there, scoop out whatever little ash. When it's cool, scoot up whatever little ash is down there. Yep. Clean it about every four to five cooks. Easy peasy. That's it. Yep. That's, yeah, Chef Greg, what about Woo. you? I'm the same thing, yeah. I don't uh, I don't use a shop vac or anything. I just kind of, you know, when I change my foil. Um, oh, Lord. Yeah. Hey, that's the Lord telling us that we kind of spin the wheel of rec tech. <laughs> all right, all right. This is the wheel of rec tech. This is our giveaway wheel. We spin this every week, so make sure that you're tuning in uh, to Fun Day Friday, both live here on Facebook as well as YouTube. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you head on over there Please. and do it. But we like to put it on what we like to give away. We always like to give away the most expensive item. That's and right. it's going to be your choice of RTB380X or the brand new Smokestone. Woo. Available both at rectech.com. Um, uh, and then we got to spin it to, to the right. That's right. With AKA Hard as Hell, the utmost confidence in ourselves. Yes, right. So give me a countdown, Chef John. Here we go. Three, two, one. Spin, spin it. it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you got to like this video, you got to share this video, and you've got to ask a good question in the comment section down below for your chance uh. to win. Expensive than a t-shirt. That's a gift that keeps on giving. You get a bunch of really good stuff for 50 bucks, yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Couple absolutely. absolutely. So we got an e-gift card yeah. available for the next winner of next week's. All you have to do, like this video, share this video, ask a question in the comment section down below. Yeah. Shoot Boys, you. we got some food coming off the yeah, grill yet? Let's do it. Go for it, John. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and grab this fish off of here. And again, you're cooking on uh, the flagship? The flagship, baby. Look at that. So just easy, super easy with a spatula. Right, just like that, you're going to pull it off. God, that looks so good. I'm going to finish it just with a little bit of lemon juice right over the top. And that thing's ready to go. We're going to let it cool down real quick before I go ahead and tear into it. But Chef Greg, what do you got? All right, I'm going to pull our lobsters out of here. Okay, you can see the color on those looking delicious and amazing. Wow. And uh, one thing you can't forget with the lobster is the butter. Okay, yes. Nick so, pork. a lot of butter over the pork. top because why not, right? Well, we don't have better. cardiology appointments anytime soon. No, sir. And maybe take a little of that butter and just kind of oh, kind of help just, me out, Chef just, Greg. Just give yeah. Some, John some love right there. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking mm. about. And again, your indicators on the lobster, obviously that shell is going to turn sort of a, a red. The flesh is going to go from like a milkiness to a nice, uh, like a white uh, color too. And some good golden brown, GBD delicious on the top of that crab uh, topping. GBD Everything smells amazing. Delicious. What about you, Chef John? What, what are you looking for? What internal temp? I'm looking for an internal temperature of about 145 degrees. I like to go 130 and okay. let it just like uh, come up to about 135. That's going to be absolutely perfect. Uh, but you can go up to about 150. I wouldn't go any over, any over that, Jody. Your fish is really going to start to lose moisture at that point. Mm -hmm. But this thing looks amazing. And the, you're looking for the flesh to be nice and firm like that. It's still nice and hot. It has um, absorbed all of that lemon, all of that thyme, and it is ready to dig in. Now, I think Nick went and got us a couple forks so we can... Uh, and you can see the steam coming off of that too and the aromatics nice, in the Nick. middle mixed with all that and just kind of steams the fish from the inside out. Yeah, here's yum, Chef yum, yum. Let's Let's tear into this. He brought four forks, one for him too. <laughs> yeah. He let's ain't tear stupid. Into this. So, and that's how you do it, just like that. Avoid those bones. 
Yeah, you definitely got some of those pin bones in there. Oh, man. That's absolutely delicious. It tastes great. Right? I love the taste of fish. Yeah, me too. You know, again, tastes, tastes like For the sure. ocean, but it doesn't smell like the no. ocean. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Tastes delicious. All right, Chef Greg, I'm going to try that, that crab. Very moist. Right Both of these dishes, super, super moist. You can smell and taste the smoke on them Get as well. Get in there, Get in there. It's not overpowering, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely flavorful. Oh, man. Wow, that's so it's good. Blowing. And again, that's a testament to the grills. The wind's blowing 15 to 20 miles per hour today, yeah. all day. It's all breezy. Day. Both grills have maintained temperature to perfection. Yep. You guys are, are going to cook this dish one more time for camera yep. right after we go off the air here. Sure. Um, but another uh, update, I want you guys to make sure, update your app, update yep. your app, update your app. I want you to go to rectech.com and check out all the sales and specials. We yeah. have a 340p, That's right. the most portable grill yeah. in the market, 10% right. off, along with the BFG flagship and dual fire. We've used both of those grills today. That's right. The 1250 mm. is 20% off right Come now on. at rectech.com. Don't wait, guys. And I want you guys to make sure you're following us all on social yep. media. I'm Chef John Pinnell on all social media. Oh, at, at BBQ, D A D J O D Y, Barbecue Dad Jody on all social media. And you can follow me at Chef Greg Muller. And again, we got a grill for every budget, every lifestyle. It doesn't matter how small your patio is or how large your deck right. is. We yep. got something for you, man. And if you guys actually want to um, physically see us using the grill, cook yep. some food, uh, possibly with us and taste it, yeah. come on out this Wednesday to our We Cook Wednesday celebration. We'll be having it both here in Evans, Georgia, as right. well as Lehigh, yep. Utah. Shout out John Ross. He's going to be throwing an amazing party out there. Yeah, but again, We Cook Wednesday, that's where you guys can come out, watch us use the grills, taste the food off of it, and enjoy some awesome sales and specials. That's we just right. want to get you in here to the retail area. So we'd love to see you mm -hmm. this Wednesday, January 24th from 4 to 7, 7, 7, 4 to 7 p.m. Cheese and crackers, ladies That's and gentlemen. Right. Demo start at 5 o'clock, so come on, come hungry, and we're going to have a yep. good time. You'll see all three of us there as well as all of the Rectech Associates. So make sure you come and hang out with us. Boys, you caught a couple of great recipes today. Thanks, Let me tell buddy. You. We I see what you did there. <laughs> we appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you need these recipes, you know where to go, rectech.com, where we've got some amazing sales and specials. Make sure you follow us on social media. Most importantly, subscribe to that YouTube channel. Shout out to all of our YouTube folks. We love you. We see you. We see you making comments. Make sure you guys follow us on social media. But from everybody here at the Rectech Worldwide Headquarters, God bless you. God bless the United States. And we'll see you at, at the Rectech. Rec Look at that lobster. Mm -mm. I love Seafood Day. It's like maybe one of my favorite. Shout out Brent Hill, 